Oh. <laughs> this is like hedonism at its finest. I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've been traveling around the world, tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. When it comes to the world's greatest wines, a lot of people think about dry wines, but I think that sweet wines are incredibly overlooked, and they're some of the greatest wines in the world. Hundreds of years ago, when we didn't have processed sugars, we didn't have Coca-Cola, we didn't have cakes, we didn't have candy. If you could taste something that is a little bit sweet, has lots of acidity in a time where you're not tasting a lot of sugar. Plus, it gets you a little bit high because of the alcohol. It's a wine of kings. Some of the world's greatest sweet wines include Port and Madeira from Portugal. You have Sauterne in France, Comandaria from Cyprus, Constancia from South Africa, and this wine, which is my personal favorite, and that's Tokai from Hungary. I'm telling you, when I get a place in Europe, I'm just gonna stock up on Tokai because they age magnificently. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, when it came to fine wines, in the world, it was really France, Mosul and Germany for the Rieslings, and Tokai. Kind of went through an awkward period during the communist period in Hungary, and kind of the new age, the revolution of Tokai started in the 90s. Tokai is the name of a village and a region in northeastern Hungary. The region's made of 27 villages, although some of the best villages are in the south, especially Mad. Also, the Tokai vineyards were classified in the 18th century, the early 1700s, which makes them one of, if not the first, region in the world to have a classified vineyard system. I personally love going to Tokai. I used to go there a couple times a year before the pandemic. Just a magical place. It always makes me feel good when I'm there. Like I'm lost in time a little bit. Tokai is the region in Hungary and the wines of Tokai will have an I at the end of them, which is silent. All that means is it's the wine from Tokai. It's possessive. There are a lot of different styles in Tokai. I made a whole educational video about that. I'll put that in the description below. And that was before I changed up the channel. So the video quality is not as good, but the content that's really good. Principally, you're going to see three different styles of wine in Tokai. You're going to see the dry Tokais, you're going to see Summer Rodney, and then you're going to have the Asu, which are the great sweet wines of Tokai. I'm here judging at the Wine Lover Awards in Budapest, Hungary, and I just did a master class with one of the greatest Tokai producers, so I thought I'd share that with you. And that, of course, is Sepshi. Sepshi to Tokai is like Romani Conti to Burgundy. It's like Screaming Eagle to Napa. It's like Margot, Cheval Blanc, Petrus to Bordeaux. I mean, it is an iconic producer. These are rare wines. They're not cheap. So I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. Let's get started with one of the dry. Sepshi was actually one of the pioneers when it came to dry wines. This is the Thruzu. This is the Tokai Formant 2017. There are six grapes that are allowed in the production of Tokai, although most of the wines are made out of Formant and Harsh Levelu with a little bit of yellow muscat. Then there's three minor grapes that aren't used as much, called Keverselu, Kabar, and Zeta. You have dry Tokais that are made in stainless steel, some that are made in oak, some in a combination of both. This Sepshi is a producer with all his crew wines. He barrel ferments all the wines. Dry Tokai is completely unique. You have to like acid. Think Mosul Riesling if you like these wines. I think of them describing them as kind of a lemony flavor with almost like some sweet green apple type notes. A little bit of yogurt, natural gas, which is I always get in Tokai, and lots of mineral flavors. A lot, just think of picking up some crushed rocks and eating them. Rich wine, a lot of texture, a little neutral. There's a little some floral components, but like I said, you gotta like lemon, lemon, a lemon, and you gotta like acidity. That acidity that kind of bites away at your gums. These are more mineral-driven thinking wines. Don't think of fruity, easy-drinking wines. These are wines that are technically a little bit harder to understand for the casual wine drinker, but for a wine geek, they bring a whole lot of pleasure. Dry Tokai is a relatively new thing. It really only started in the early 2000s, but where I think the real Tokai lies is in the sweet wines. Okay, let's move on. We have the Sepshi Summer Rodney 2017. Summer Rodney is maybe my favorite style of Tokai. You don't see it a lot outside of Hungary. So what happens is when you make Tokai, you have a base wine and then you pick out the little Asu berries. Asu berries are raisin berries because they've been affected by botrytis. They shrivel down and you kind of soak them in the dry wine. That's how you make the great Asu wines. However, Summer Rodney is where you pick the whole bunch. It has some normal grapes and it has some raisin grapes and then you ferment them all together. They're usually a lot more affordable and I don't know why they're not exported more. Plus the name is cool, Summer Rodney, that's cool. Typical sweet Tokai. You gotta think honey, apricot, lemon, natural gas. Oh, so good. <laughs> Even if you don't like sweet wines, the high acidity of sweet Tokai kind of washes your palate clean. 
and it just makes it such a it's such a unique enjoyable experience apricot marzipan lemon if you throw that all together we'll sprinkle a little bit of white pepper in there throw some just really good stuff mm. These are wines that have a lot, quite a bit of sugar. I can't remember exactly what Sepsis Samarodni is, but I think it's close to 120, 150 grams a liter of residual sugar. The Asu wines have, you know, over 250 grams. So they are sweet, but the acid really just <laughs> makes it a really enjoyable experience. I cannot imagine hundreds of years ago when I'm not having a lot of sugar and drinking a wine like this with so much acidity, so much sweetness, plus the alcohol. I mean, this is like hedonism at its finest. Oh, that's good. Next up, we have the Sepshi Asu. The, this is the Tokai Asu 6 Petunios 2017. Historically, you had a Petunio system. You'll see three, four, five, six. They've gotten rid of three and four. Petunios are barrels. And what they did is they put those Asu berries, these little raisin berries in these barrels. So the number indicated how many barrels they put in the dry wine to make the wine. So six petunios, because it would put six barrels of those raisins added to the wine. So you'll still see some five and six, but they're trying to get rid of that number as well. Now they're trying to make Tokai a little bit easier to understand. So this style of wine you'll just see is Tokai Asu. This is significantly sweeter than Samarodi. It's more powerful. I mean, you can even look at the color. It's deeper in color, a lot of honey, dried, dried apricots. This is more fresh apricot. This is dried peaches, dried apricot, dried lemon peel, dried orange peel, white pepper, dandelion, natural grass, super complex. Oh. These wines are just so powerful. They're so viscous, they cover the mouth. Australians call sweet wine stickies because they kind of coat your mouth. And it does at first, but Tokai has this acidity where it feels sticky and then your mouth is washed clean at the end and then you're just salivating. Oh. <laughs> Great wines if you get the chance to taste these. Like I said, there are other types of Tokais too. They're even sweeter. Tokais called Essencia. Those wines only get to about 3% alcohol at most. Those are super rich and concentrated. But I'm telling you, if you want to have a really unique experience, you have to be trying some of these wines. And that's why I believe it's one of the world's greatest wines. To me, I enjoy Tokai a lot more than Sauterne. So I'd love to know, have you tried Tokai before? Do you have any favorite producers? I want to hear it in the comments below. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.